This is what's happening at The Rock. Grace and peace, freedom family and friends. These are your midweek announcements. For the month of June, the Freedom Rock family is being challenged to be an offering. Challenging us to not only talk about walking in love, but walking it out by being a blessing to someone else who is a member of this body impromptu. This is what the kingdom and the love of God is all about. LHM Media Connect is looking for members to help serve the kingdom. Contact April Morris to inquire or if you would like to join us at 601-480-2913. Save the date and get ready for the Momentum 2K23 Pastors and Leadership Conference. It's being held from July 27th through the 29th with the services being held at Freedom Rock and the intensives being held at Meridian Community College's Tommy Dulaney Center featuring Dr. Hart Ramsey, Bishop Darrell Hill, Pastor Michael Lampkin, and Darius Polk, along with five intensives on leadership, preaching, grants and finance, hospitable culture, and media and marketing. Bishop LeBaron Hedgman is the conference host and speaker. You can register today at forwardmomentum.org. We look forward to seeing you. Baby dedications have resumed here at Freedom Rock. If you desire to have your child dedicated, please contact the church office. The nursery will be closed during the month of July. For more information, please see your connection team leader, Angela Winston. The Outreach Connection Team is looking for compassionate men who have a heart after God's own heart to join the Outreach Connection Team. We need you to help serve the underserved and impoverished communities. The Outreach Connection Team meets every second Sunday at 8.30 a.m. and every third Saturday at 9 a.m. Please contact Elder Betty Cole or the church office if you are interested. Now is the time to enroll your child in the Camp Destiny Summer Enrichment Program. It's going on now and will last until July 21st. And the children are not only enjoying themselves on weekly trips, they're also learning from certified teachers in core subjects, archery, Spanish, and more. The cost is $90 per week. And if you would like to enroll your child, please contact Program Director Sandra Chandler at the numbers on your screen. The Ministry of Care will meet every fourth Monday at 6 p.m. via Zoom. Elder Cedric Dubos is your Connection Team Leader. Catch Bishop Hedgeman each weekday at 4.50 p.m. on 95.1 FM for motivational moments with Bishop LeBaron Hedgeman. The moment where positive vibes and voice prosper both decisions and the day. So don't miss out on your motivational moment each weekday at 4.50 p.m. on 95.1 FM. So if you have a birthday, an anniversary, or you would just like to give someone a shout out, send us your email to office at frcfc.org. And for birthdays and anniversaries, make sure to list the first and last name as well as the date. These have been your midweek announcements and we're asking you to keep all announcements in mind and be reminded that Freedom Rock Cathedral is locally committed and globally commissioned. Grace and peace, Freedom Rock Cathedral. We thank God for your presence here on today. We welcome you to our midweek worship experience where we know God is going to bless your heart, speak into your life, and make sure that everything on your mind get answered through his word. We're looking forward to a powerful worship experience on tonight. We know that Bishop Hedgeman has been in the series dealing with being and offering. We're looking forward to a continuation of a powerful word on the green heart. We pray now that you're getting ready, you're tuned in. We ask that you share Share this with a neighbor. Let a friend know that the word is getting ready to go forward. I'm excited about what God is getting ready to do through this word on tonight. We're going to now have our worship ministry. And then right after that, a powerful word from none other than our own Bishop Hedgeman. And then we'll be right back with you. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Everybody clap. Come on. Woo. We bless you tonight. Hallelujah.
Everybody clap your hands. Everybody clap your hands. Everybody clap your hands. 
lift your hands to glory to God in person as well as at home. Father, we lift our hands to you because, God, we are living proof that your mercy truly endureth forever. God, by this time and I walk with you, our hands are lifted because, God, we are now realizing that one thing you can never run out of is mercy. And God, the outcomes of our present, the things that are already working that we haven't even yet fully grasped, God, they're results of your mercy. And so, Father, we thank you as recipients of your mercy. We call you like David called you, a good God, an awesome God. Now speak to our hearts tonight from your word. Allow the seed of your word to be received in our heart. Any thought, any faction of mine, God, that stands in the way of our abilities to receive your word with gladness, God, move it now. We allow the Holy Ghost to give us a focus that we, do, that we don't have the power within ourselves, God, to engineer. Holy Ghost, help us to hear your truth tonight and to not miss your word. Father, we thank you in advance that your word gives life and light to them that find it. So make your word available to us, God, and we declare in advance both light and life is ours. While your hand is lifted, go ahead and declare that in advance. Say both light and life is mine. One more time, both light, that's understanding, and life, that spirit is mine. In Jesus' name, amen. If you will, saints of God, let's go to the gospel according to John chapter 13. The gospel according to John chapter 13. And we're going to be reading verse 34 through verse 35. The gospel of John chapter 13. Verse 34 through verse 35. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Not the way you desire to love or the way other people have loved you. I need you to love other people the way I loved you. That ye also love one another. And by this, by what is the this? By loving people the way I have loved you, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord as we begin and continue in this series entitled The Offering. Everybody say The Offering. Amen. As we're hearing this word about the offering, we're growing to understand that the offering is not just something we give. The offering is who we are to other people. God's love in us makes us a offering, not necessarily a sacrifice, but more so a blessing to other people. You cannot walk in the love of God and not be a blessing to other people. They don't always realize it. But if you're walking in the love of God, you're going to be a blessing to other people. Amen. Glory to God. Deacon Brown, is today your birthday? I thought so. Let's give that. Let's tell Deacon Brown happy birthday. All right. Yeah. He got that thing in rewind. He's getting younger. Amen. All right. Now, the reason why uh, we're teaching this series is because we discovered uh, as God brought illumination to me. God calls me to see things that ordinarily you would humanly look over. And in times of prayer, the Spirit of God spoke to me uh, that we assume that just because people are expressive and people are, are, are seemingly nice in their greeting and people can shout a certain way, we assume that what we experience from them at church is a confirmation that away from church they walk in the love of God. And that is an assumption. That's not necessarily a truth. And the Spirit of God brings this to our understanding because we must champion, we must master, we must practice to perfection walking in the love of God because walking in the love of God will automatically by default 
make our heart posture towards God pleasing to him. And when we understand more about Elroy, we understand that, that Elroy, the Lord who sees, that the thing that the Lord sees is the heart. Hallelujah. And so it brings us to Romans 5 and 5, which helps us understand that there's a connection between your heart and the love of God flowing to and through you. Yeah, we cannot talk about the love of God flowing to you and through you without including the condition of your heart. It simply says, hope make it not a shame because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. The love of God flows to and through us at heart level. So cardiac coloration, part three of this series, is focusing on conditions of the heart. And we're using colors to help reveal those conditions. The black heart has a condition. The red heart has a condition. We've taught that. The orange heart has a condition. The blue heart has a condition. The pure heart, a man, has a condition. And from the pure heart, we're talking now, the green heart. Now, I need you to write these descriptions down in your notes early on for tonight. I need you to write these descriptions down, okay? The first one is the description all-like, A-W-E-dash-like, all-like, okay? All-like. The second one is unshakable. Third one, lasting. Lasting. Thank you for filling in for us, Sean. Good to see you. The fourth one, undefiled and undefeated. All like, unshakable, lasting, undefiled, and undefeated. We said the green heart is associated with life, growth, and fertility, productivity, being productive. It signifies fruitfulness. The color green speaks to fruitfulness, okay? Individuals who heart, whose heart is green are individuals who express freshness. There's a freshness to them. There's life to them. There's renewal to them. You, you're energized by their presence. You feel hope by conversating with them. It's something about them that just renews and fuels, okay? Green is associated with health. People who are green heart are people who, who, are, who are big on health. It doesn't necessarily mean that they have this strict diet, but it does mean that they value health. They like to see things healthy. They have no peace in seeing people dying, fragment, desolate, broken, and destroyed. No, they have a preference. Their preference is going to be that things are healthy or things are good. Things are strong. Amen. All right, people who with gold hearts, I mean, excuse me, green hearts are also those who are people who, who embody or express prosperity. Okay? And they see these things as lifestyles, not moments. That's one of the things I love about people with a green heart. Green heart people understand the importance of lifestyle, not just the look, not just the moment. You don't want to have a commercial-like uh, uh, moment of healing. No, you want to have a lifelong moment of healing. Lifestyle, things that must become every day if they're going to be real, must become every day if they're going to last, must become every day if they are going to be a blessing. Green-hearted people appreciate moments where God step in and he does the impossible. But green heart people don't settle just for the spectacular, the every now and then. They understand that God is a good God every day. Hallelujah. And the promises of God are good to us every day. Hallelujah. And my praise belongs to God every day. A lifestyle. Everybody say every day. Now, the green heart, we said relishes these four words. Say them after me. Practice, process, productivity, prosperity. We don't just run to prosperity. We don't just wake up tomorrow and we're prosperous. There is some things we must practice if we're going to prosper. Say that with me. I feel God there working against wrong way of thinking. And so we're going to say this, and I believe God's going to favor our agreement okay say, say that with me say there are some things I must practice if I'm going to prosper yeah anything you prosper in you've practiced and you're practicing please hear that no we don't prosper overnight 
We wish it was that easy. But no, you prosper by practice. You get better at something by practice, right? Amen. You want to get, you want to be more familiar with the word of God. You want to grow in the word of God. You got to practice reading the scriptures. You got to practice quoting the word. Okay. We prosper by practice. Green hearted people embellish. They, they relish. They, 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 they highlight, they value, they promote practice, process, productivity, and prosperity. Now, we say one of the greatest misconceptions in life is this idea that because I'm living, I'm growing. But just because you're living and you're seeing another birthday does not mean you're growing. Oh, man, you don't have to believe it. You can just realize you get in one of those, those spots and series of life, three years here, four years there, you look up like, man. I'm, 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 I'm doing the same thing. I'm the same person. Got, have gotten older, right? But, but, but haven't changed, haven't grown. Just because you're breathing doesn't mean you're growing, which brings us to this truth. We don't grow automatically. No, 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 we don't grow automatically. That's why it's, um, that's why it's good. You don't have to necessarily be let me say it this way, you don't have to be transparent, but sometimes it's very important that you be honest. You wise enough to know the difference, right? Sometimes transparency includes details. Sometimes honesty just includes outcomes. It's important that we be honest in our testimonies because when we just, testi when we just testify of all that God did and we don't tell the truth about the things we had to do in order to see those testimonies come to pass we mess people up and people will begin to believe that they don't have to do nothing to see God and see uh, it's important that you you share oh God uh, you know the time the things you had to do the, the way you had to pray the things you had to give up the times you wanted to quit the times you had to endure correction it's time you you got to put honesty there so people who hear your testimony won't think that they can just exist and see the goodness of God all right. And so it's imperative. It's imperative. It's vital that we don't believe that just because we're living, we're growing. We said there's a difference between existing and flourishing. Let's pick up on that. Write down Isaiah 15 and 6. We're not going to turn there, but I just want you to write it down again if you didn't Sunday. Isaiah 15 and 6 says things were existing, but they were not flourishing. Said grass was there. Trees was there. Nothing was green. So it is possible to be existing, breathing, but not flourishing, okay? Now, God wants us to flourish. Green heart people are big on flourishing. Let's go to Psalms 92 and 12. Praise the Lord. I, I, I believe that I got some green hearted people in here tonight, and I believe I got some green hearted people that's watching. You're not just waiting to die. Talk, Bishop. Hallelujah. I'm not just sitting up here waiting to die. Oh, I'll be glad. And over yonder and by and by. No, I believe that it is the perfect, detailed, inscripted will of God that while you're here on earth, God desires that you flourish. Hallelujah. And let me throw this in there. Even against odds. In other words, the deck ain't got to be stacked in your favor for you to flourish. Matter of fact, he said he'll prepare a table right there in the very presence of your enemies. Let's look at this flourish. Psalms 92 and 12. Look what the Bible says. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He or she, righteous, shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. This word uh, flourish is, is the word for rock. It means to bud. It means to blossom. It means to bloom. When you see the word flourish in scripture, it's speaking of things budding, things blossoming, things blooming. The righteous shall bud. The righteous shall bloom. The, 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 the righteous shall uh, uh, bud. They shall blossom. They shall bloom. Now, hear this. Notice he says the righteous shall what? Come on, say it with power. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree and he shall grow right he shall what 
grow. But the Bible does not speak of growing before flourishing. The Bible says we must first flourish. And from a flourished place, we grow. And it makes sense. Before something becomes a tree, it's got a first bud. Right? But before, before it can have vines growing everywhere, it has the first bloom. And so the Bible uh, helps us understand that the green-hearted people are people who are growth-likely because they are willing to do the necessary work to flourish. And the Bible says if you're going to flourish, you will definitely grow. Because anything that flourishes in God grows. In other words, God said, it's never my will to let you finish at just blooming. It's never my will for you to just finish at budding. Oh, God. And there's some people here today, there's some things God is doing in your life. And yes, you feel newness. You feel freshness. You're excited about what's to come. But I want you to understand, baby, that's only a glimpse. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's just the budding of it. That's the flourishing of it. God has growth in mind. Now go to the Amplified, Psalms 92 and 12. The Bible says in the Amplified, he says it this way. Hallelujah. The uncompromisingly righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. They will be long-lived, stately, upright, useful, and fruitful. They shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. The first word there is majestic. Second word is stable. Third word is durable. Fourth word is incorruptible. Once we begin to flourish, the Bible says we then grow. And when you begin to grow, God says anything that grows, anything that's made green by me will be majestic. It will be stable. It will be durable. It will be incorruptible. Once it's made green, God says it's now majestic. It's now stable. It's now durable. It's now incorruptible. Now, some of you say, I understand. I read those words before, but I'm trying to put an image to those words. Well, that's why I gave you that descriptive listing in the beginning. Because the words that you wrote down as descriptions are the words that go along with these words. It helps us understand what the green heart, glory to God, looks like after God has begun to move it from just flourishing to, a beginning, to its beginning to grow. The word majestic means all-like. Everybody say all-like. All-like is, in other words, <laughs> oh God, instead of it being all full, which if we would put a sound or an expression to all full, it would be, uh. Instead of it being all full, uh, God said it would be all like as in wow. See, this is the hour where God is wanting you internally to allow God and the love of God to move in some areas in your life that has been, uh, until they become, wow. Every word you're hearing, every word you're walking out, everything you're praying, everything you're applying, every time you choose to obey God, you are moving your life from, uh, to wow. Because when God makes it green, the Bible says it will be majestic, which will be all like. Then he says it will be stable. Stable means unshakable. Unshakable. Oh, God. Unshakable. That's why it's so prosperous. It's unshakable. God, green hearted people are people who are unshakable. Hmm. A cloudy day and a, and a headache and a sore back don't make them ugly. Stable, not moody, but stable. How can you be so happy go at 8 o'clock 
and so down and depressed at 11 o'clock. Stable. Stable. Doesn't mean that things are not coming along, things that are not coming at you that you dislike, but, but because you're so committed to process, because your heart is so committed to the things of God that, that, that it, it, it makes you stable. Then he says durable. The word durable, we said, was the third word you wrote in your listing? Lasting. Glory to God. Lasting. Hear that in the Lord. Lasting. The beauty of you growing green. The beauty of you, glory to God, allowing your life to become growth friendly and growth likely uh, is, is that God can then take your life and make it lasting. That's what you want on your life. You want the blessing of lasting. Hallelujah. You don't want to be in your 30s and they look like your 60s. And you don't want your 60s to look and feel like your 90s. You want it to be lasting. Hallelujah. And then he says it would be incorruptible, meaning undefiled, pure, and undefeated, victorious. So I need you to just look at those words that you wrote down in that description. Those people that wrote them up. Go back up to your notes to those words. All like, unshakable, lasting, undefiled, and undefeated. I just want you to take a few moments, even at home. I just want you to take these 30 seconds and just look at those words and imagine your life. Not your family, not your spouse, just you. Imagine your life, come on. Being every one of those words. That's what it means. That's the promise, glory to God, that comes alive for you when your heart is green. Now, in order to get there, we've got to become growth likely, and we got to change some things so that our heart and our life can be growth friendly. In other words, anything that's growth friendly is, 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 has been made easy to grow. If it's growth friendly, it's not hard for growth. It's not difficult to grow beyond. So there's some things we've got to change. There's some things we've got to modify in order for our life to be growth likely and growth friendly. So again, we said it, it, growth doesn't happen automatically. Growth doesn't happen organically. But who remembers Sunday? Growth happens how? intentionally let's go to first timothy 4 and 15 growth happens intentionally first timothy 4 and 15 we're going to start in the message bible first first timothy 4 verse 15 and i want us to read this aloud okay first timothy 4 we'll we'll read uh verse 15 i think it puts 16 with it because sometimes the message bible connects scriptures together for a complete thought okay can y'all see it can you see it clearly or is it hard for you to say? Okay, all right, we're ready? Let's read. Cultivate these things. All see you. Keep a firm grasp and your teaching. Don't be diverted, just keep at it. Now, this, this scripture really describes a person whose heart is green. Green as in growth friendly and growth likely. The first thing he says is cultivate these things. It says, watch this, immerse yourself in them. Now that's, that, that, that's a loaded, loaded instruction. And you hear that, immerse yourself in them. My question is, do you know how to do that? Do you know how to immerse yourself in things that God is speaking, God is leading, God is showing you to become? He said immerse yourself in them. Whenever you immerse yourself in things that God is showing you, God is growing you into, 
you become growth likely. Anything you immerse yourself in, you're more likely to grow in. If you immerse yourself in foolishness, you going to grow as a fool. If you immerse yourself in stubbornness, you going to grow disobedient and stubborn. If you immerse yourself in waste and the lacking of stewardship, you going to grow broke and you going to stay in lack. Because anything you immerse yourself in, you're going to grow in. If you immerse yourself in foods and fats and sugars, you're going to grow wide. Because anything you immerse yourself in, you become grow likely in. Now, there are other translations that help us with this. But he says, cultivate these things, immerse yourself in them, and the people will see you mature right before your eye, their eyes. People will see you grow. People will see that green heart grow right before their eyes. And he says, don't be diverted, just keep at it. Write down the word diverted. Our vocabulary expands a little bit tonight. Message Bible uses the word diverted. It speaks totally different from King James. You'll never see diverted in King James, the original King James. But he says, immerse yourself in them. Let's look at what the NIV says where the, Ampli the Message Bible says immerse yourself in them. Let's look at two other translations that maybe help us understand how to do this. 1 Timothy 4 and 15 says, be diligent in these matters. Look what he says, give yourself wholly to them. Okay? So before anyone can see your progress, whether they want to admit it or not, whether they like it or not, amen, they, they, they cannot deny that you've grown. Mm. It could, I mean, disturb, it could rip them and dis, di, disarm them of their excuses, disarm them of their reasons, disarm them of their accusations. But look, before they can see you progress in something, he says you got to first give yourself wholly to the thing you're trying to progress in. The reason why many of us, our hearts are not green is because when God brings things before us that he wants us to mature in, we don't devote all of ourselves to it. Let's be honest. And because we didn't give all of ourselves to it, our commitment to it is hit and miss. So when he says immerse yourself in them, Message Bible, the NIV says give yourself wholly to them. So let's say if you're talking about mastering your responses, that, 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 there's, there's a, that, that there was a period in your life where you just couldn't get your responses right. I mean, all somebody got to do is look at you, you gone. All somebody got to do is falsely accuse you, you, you going off the handle. All somebody got to do is turn a cold shoulder to you and you are shut down for nine months. Well, you say, and God brought that to your attention. The Holy Ghost, you in there praying about a blessing and God talking to you about a lesson. Ain't that how God works? We go into prayer about a blessing and God end up talking to us about a lesson. All right? And God talks to you about that lesson. But, but guess what? If you don't give yourself wholly to that. See, we got to learn how to lock in on growing in one area while you go to work every day. Locked in on growing in one area while you're loving your spice. Your spouse, excuse me, the way Jesus loved you. You got to lock in on growing in one area while you're having to deal with pain and illness and fevers and headaches. Lock in on one area while you're not happy with the way your money is flowing. You got to give yourself wholly to it. That one thing, if people are going to see your progress, progress that cannot be witnessed is in question. In other words, if nobody else can speak to their progress but you, it's in question. The Bible says everyone will see it when you give yourself wholly to it. So I use that analogy. You got to give yourself wholly to your responses. I'm working on my responses. Oh, somebody else over there working on a business plan and you can't get distracted. Now you're trying to come up with a business plan, competing with them. No, stay where grace and where God has you. I'm giving myself wholly to working on my responses. Saints of God, this is how you become growth likely. Let's see what, I know we didn't like that, but it's okay. Let's see what the NLT says. 
We want to shout and sow and it's done. Thank you. No, no, no. Remember, green heart people understand practice, process, productivity, then prosperity. Practice, that's my part. Look what the NLT says. Give your complete attention to these matters. Look what he says. Throw yourself into your task so that everyone will see your progress. Throw yourself into it. What does that mean? I love that. This is going to free somebody tonight. Some of us, we have not been able to throw ourselves into the very thing that God is wanting to make green in our life because we still waiting on the participation of other people. And I believe there's some people in this room who have walked with God long enough who will be honest and tell you that as long as you are waiting for other people to buy into your growth before you get started, you'll never get there. I wish I had some. Don't leave me out here by myself. No, there are some times when sometimes the very people who you thought would be your Scotty Pippen saying, I ain't trying to do that. Some people who you thought would be your Robin Batman will say, no, I ain't doing that. They want to stay childish. Sometimes they want to stay silly. Sometimes they want to stay selfish. And you can't wait on everybody who you want to be in your corner to be agreeing, glory to God, to the preseason work. You got to go ahead and get started whether they are supportive or not. They may not throw nothing into it, but you got to throw all of yourself into it. Hallelujah! And I believe I got some witnesses that the Holy Ghost will be your company. Oh, they still want to fuss and fight. They still want to be broke. They still want to be met. They still want to keep a mess at work. But if you throw yourself wholly into it, oh, well, it's so lonely. Nobody want to go to lunch with me no more. Nobody want to be my friend anymore. You're committed to growth. Throw yourself wholly into it, and the Holy Ghost will be your company. And when you prove yourself to be doing it right and not doing it because they doing it, God won't just let the Holy Ghost be your company. Watch this. God will raise up somebody, hallelujah, that's hungry for the same thing you're hungry for. And how can two walk to God will bring somebody that will walk in agreement with you? And this is how God does the thing. The people who didn't want to give themselves wholly to it. God will make them watch the celebration of your progress. I know that to be true. I ain't telling you what I heard. You got me? But you got to immerse yourself in it. You got to immerse yourself in it. Listen at this. 97% of people. This is a quote I read. I thought it was so good for this green heart portion. 97% of people can't even focus on one thing without getting distracted. It's time for you to be a part of the top 3% of society. I said 97% of people cannot focus on one thing without getting distracted. Getting distracted don't mean I looked over on something else. It means I stopped doing what I was working on and committed to, and I allowed something else to pull me over here away from where God had me growing, where God had me focused, 97%. But I believe there are some people in this room who believe God has called them in the three. <laughs> I know it's hard for some people because see, you're so busy, you've gotten so comfortable just making excuses for being average and mediocrity, but I am your man of God and I'm declaring to you that God is calling you to be amongst the 3%. Hallelujah. People who are able to immerse yourself in a thing until you fully grow and go, you fully flourish and then grow in that very thing. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The green heart is growth likely and growth friendly. Write these, write these words down. Because some of us, we, 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 gotta, we gotta know how, we gotta, somebody gotta help us to understand what growth looks like. We throw that word around. And we talk about people growing. We hear people say that they've grown, but we need somebody to help us. We, we need insight. We need qualification. We need imagery 
We need somebody to help us to see and understand what growth looks like. Remember, green-hearted people understand not just practice, but process. Listen to me, there's a process to grow. You ain't going to just look at somebody else's family and then just think, oh God, uh, am I going to be like that? Th those people have process. You're looking at a love relationship between a father and a daughter, father and a son, mother and a daughter, mother and a son. That's a process. You look at people who are able to, to do great things in the kingdom of God and, and hold their self, amen, in a place of righteousness. That's a process. You grow to that place. You don't just go to that place. You can't just go to church. You got to be in church and grow in church. You don't go there. You grow there. You don't go to debt cancellation, debt freedom. You grow to debt cancellation and debt freedom. You don't just go to being a tither and a bosom giver. You grow there. Everything is a process. You don't just go to a place of being forgiving, understanding, endearing, suffering long. You grow to that. Hallelujah. And we got to understand what growth looks like. The first phase of growth is changing. You can't grow in nothing that you're not willing to change. Everybody say, I must be willing to change. Come on, say it again. I must be willing to change. Oh, God. Come on, say it again. I must be willing to change. The truth of the matter is anything that's still tripping you up, still giving you headache and heartache, still looking at you in the mirror is there because you are not committed to changing. You can't put cologne on top of that. Oh, glory to God. You can't put hair weave to cover that up. You got to be committed to changing. Let me help you understand something and say, oh, oh ooh, this, is, this is too much. No, this is what it means to be godly, righteous. This is what it means to flourish. You got to be committed to changing. Oh, God, this, earlier this week, I was writing down things in 2024 that I'm expecting of myself. And two of those things, I've never charted those waters before. And it's not uh, incentive stuff. It's not stuff called that gonna, that's going to bring more money. That's going to bring. No, it's becoming stuff. But why are you thinking about that? Because I'm committed to changing. I understand this is God's nature. It's God's way. Remember, anything green is God, is God approved. God don't approve your heart if it's not committed to changing. When you committed to changing, you understand that the, I, gotta, I, I can't stay this way. Oh, thank you, Lord. Do you know how good it is for you to get to a place where you can actually admit, I can't stay there. I ain't blaming everybody. Oh, I ain't have no daddy. Oh, I ain't have no mom. I'm going to get on that Sunday. No, so, so when I realize what I don't have, I then must be committed to growing, getting the information, getting the exposure, getting the mentoring to be that. People who be that ain't had everything in it either. But they were committed to growing. Oh, I ain't never had no man to show me. How long that's going to be your excuse? I ain't never had no woman. I ain't had no woman to show me how to treat no man. Well, how long that's going to be your excuse? You know you got to treat a man the right way in order to be pleasing to God. So you're going to keep using your childhood and you 50? You think God's signing off on that? No, you're not committed to changing. You got to be committed to change. When you're committed to changing, you find the necessary information you need to become. It takes commitment. I got it. So it starts with changing. What does it start with? Then watch this. It's, then, then, it, then it moves to the next phase. So when, when, I, when I begin to be willing to change, then it leads to yielding. Yielding, because see, when you start moving in the direction of change in the name of God-like growth, God will begin to speak to you. Oh, I'm telling you. you he would say, oh, I just I don't know what God told me. I don't know if I can hear his voice. Start changing towards God-like growth. Start saying, oh, no, I ain't going to say that because that ain't pleasing to God. No, I ain't going to speak that because that, that you start moving that direction. Oh, God will start talking to you. Trust me, you're going to hear him clearly. But when, when we go from changing, we then got to move to yielding. Why? Because when I begin to change, now God begins to open the book up to me. 
And he begins to share with me things I would have never been exposed to if I wasn't committed to changing. See, there are some revelations, understandings, and breakthroughs that God is only going to give you to the degree you're willing to grow. Or you're going to be still standing over here behind this wall. You can't see nothing over there. You, I don't know what God is going to do in my life. Seems like I'm just over here guessing. But when you commit to changing, God will open the book up. The Bible says our life has been scripted pre-recorded there's a script to every chapter of your life and when you commit to growing and changing God then will begin to speak to you because now he's going to show you what you need to yield to by yielding on your paper right embrace when you begin to yield you begin to embrace changing yielding changing then we start yielding this is what growth looks like we start yielding. Oh, man, I can remember. Ooh, ooh, by now, I would have dot, 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 dot. See, that's evidence of yielding. Oh, man, oh, man, I remember a couple of years ago. Oh, God, by now, I would have dot, 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 dot. But you're not because you, you're learning yielding. You're embracing. Then, number three, it goes to refraining. Now, this is where I've done this wrong in many years before. And I know what it's like to be frustrated because it seems like you can't grow in a particular area. I've lived that before. Where you know where your, where your shortcomings are, you know where you're supposed to be, and you can't get there. You, you're doing effort stuff, but it ain't adding up. One of the things that helped me get over that hump in my walk with God was I understood changing but then I tried to go straight to refraining. So see, I thought by works and my own power that I could change and grow by what I refrained from. Oh, I ain't going to do that. We can all do that. Oh, I ain't going to do this. Oh, oh I'm going to start doing this, do this. So now I'm in works. I'm in self. I'm doing it by my power and my might. And I, had, and I kept coming up short because I was out of order. I was out of divine order. You got to yield first. And see, here's the beauty. When you yield first to what God is wanting to do in your life, this is going to help some people's heart become green. God then will give a grace to you. Watch this. And that grace is what helps you refrain. Because how many of you have been like Paul? What I want to do good, evil is forever present. And the good I want to do, I don't find myself doing. Why? Because I'm not operating under grace. I'm operating under law. And under law, it's about my works and my ability and my insight and my knowledge and my strength and my know-how. But God knows how to keep banging that head up against the wall. God knows how to keep letting you go through all of that and keep coming up empty until you get to the place where you realize, I need to yield first. So God can put grace on you. And when God put grace on you, watch this, you can refrain from things. Because watch this, when, what, what happens when the area you need to refrain from is the area of your weakness? You ain't going to grow if every time the area that you need to refrain from is the area of your weakness. You can't get over that hump without grace. But the Bible says, my grace is sufficient and my strength is made perfect in your time of weakness. When you yield to me, I'll give you the grace that will make you strong in areas you once was weak. Now you ready to grow and you can't take no my power, my, my, my. You will say like Paul, by the grace. Of God, I am what I am. Some of you, you've been trying to change by refraining because you want to be in control. But see, when you go from change to yielding, you allow grace to take control. And now those things that kept tripping you up, you can refrain from. If it's something as simple as getting out of timing. See, we always think true, but we always think sexual stuff. Oh, a woman, oh, a man, oh, 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 drugs, oh, my flesh. But what about getting out of God's timing? That's another hiccup that you got to refrain from. Sometimes what we want to say, go, God is saying no. Can you refrain and stay in the no with grace? 
So we have changing. Then what we have to do, number two? Yielding, which is where we discover grace. And now he puts grace on us. Now we're growing, as the Bible says, in grace, not in self. See, you lose credibility trying to grow in self because you make all these promises to people of what you're going to do and what you don't do no more. And I just want to let you know that that was the last time. Yeah, I just want to let you know that, that it's going to be different now. Yep, I ain't doing it no more. Oh, I just want to let you know that. <laughs> oh, y'all hope you enjoyed that last time because I am a different woman. And them days are over in self. Then here come Tuesday and you're the same person you said you weren't going to be. And now people don't believe you or trust you. So now you don't have no credibility because you tried to change in self. But when you are under grace, you say, you know what? This is what I'm pursuing. And this is why I believe God is leading me. And I'm committed to growing there. Even though I know that it ain't going to be easy. And there's going to be some days I'm going to get it and some days I'm not. But one thing I'm not going to do is move from this place. I'm immersing myself in this. I'm throwing myself wholly into this. And I ain't letting up off of it until everyone can see my progress. Changing. Yielding, refraining, which grace helps us do, then suffering. We helped you understand suffering differently the other Sunday. We said suffering is pleasing God while not being pleased. And see, when you begin to change, there's always, oh my, chapters in change that don't feel good. There are chapters in change. There's a part of the syllabus where God says the very thing he shows you that's going to bring pleasure to him ain't going to bring pleasure to you. It's called suffering. And if you're going to change, you have to, as Paul says, endure suffering. I got to keep pleasing God even though it ain't pleasing me. I got to keep pleasing God even though it looked like they winning. The wicked is prospering. I got to keep pleasing God even though it looked like, oh my God, they keep getting away. I got to keep pleasing God. Yeah, suffering. And then lastly, practicing. This is what growth looks like. I'm suffering. I'm going to keep pleasing God even though I'm not pleased. And then it requires practicing. When you begin to grow, there are some things, listen to me, saints of God, you can't just do when you're excited. What did I just say? You can't just do it when you're excited. There are a lot of people I know who talk a lot about what they want to be and what they want to do. And they, they keep coming up short because they don't want to practice. There's some things you can't just do it when you're excited. You got to do it while you're disappointed. If it's practice, it's not contingent upon an emotion, nor a condition. When I played college basketball and I was on scholarship and they was helping me pay for my college, I couldn't determine if I was going to go to practice. If Oh, I just, I just woke up this morning and my sinus is acting up. No, no. I, I couldn't just go to practice when I didn't have no feelings. I mean, when I felt great. Couldn't just go to practice when it was sunny outside. And we got to be, we got to report at 5 o'clock to get taped up, to get ready to start cardio at 5.45, because class starts at 8. I couldn't say, oh, oh, well, oh, it's sunny today, I'm ready. But then next week, because it's cloudy, oh, I don't want to go today. If it's practice, it cannot be contingent upon a condition. I got to do it every day, regardless. Saints of God, this is really, hallelujah, what we call a growth track. Oh, man, you locked in. You, you, you doing it now. Old folks say, oh, you cooking like grease. When you practicing something, regardless of condition. That's what it means to throw yourself into it. So what does, what does growth look like to be growth likely? It starts with, it leads to, which leads to, which includes and requires. Come on, give God praise for the word tonight. Hallelujah. Come on, let's honor the Lord tonight. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. 
just worship him right where you are at home even in person saints of God as you're worshiping please be reminded God saved you through giving to you his precious son Jesus with the full intention and expectation of you growing. God saved you with a version of you in mind. God created you and saved you. The Bible says he also predestinated you. He established your destiny well before you came to him because anything that was created by God including you was created with an expectation to grow I pray tonight that your mind your thoughts have been challenged but I pray also that the spirit of God in you have been encouraged to now understand that I got to be committed to change. And then God will give you a grace. Hallelujah. When you yield. Glory to God. When, you, when you're serious about changing and growing, you, you begin to yield. You begin to embrace a grace. Hallelujah. And Father, I pray tonight for everyone that's watching and everyone that's present. I pray, God, that they receive a grace to finish. Hey, just like on Sunday, God, we say yet again, we declare a grace to finish that allows us to have in hand the fruit of completion. We didn't just talk about doing this. We didn't talk about just doing it. But God, we got the fruit of completion. Not just the talk of it, but the evidence of it. God, I pray tonight, hallelujah, that we join the 3% who can immerse ourselves in things and refuse to allow others to distract us from it. God, give us that one thing tonight. I pray for everyone that's listening and watching. The area, God, that you're calling us to grow in, please reveal it to us even the more this week. Make it crystal clear. In this hour, I hear the Lord saying, I'm not talking about several things. No, no, there's a one thing that I need you to champion. There's a one thing. There, there, there is a one thing that I need you to become growth friendly in. God, we receive grace tonight. And we declare and we decree our heart green. In the mighty name of Jesus, we declare it is so. Let every believer in agreement say amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Go ahead and clap your hands. Hallelujah. And somebody just say, I receive. Hallelujah, because we understand that the righteous flourishes when we commit to doing the work of change. Look at your neighbor and say change. In education, we call that growing from a traditional mindset to a growth mindset. So I challenge you to hide this word in your heart so we can commit to being righteous, to righteous living in everything that we do because we want the world to see that we love God. Hallelujah. Somebody give God glory. Hallelujah. Now it's time to give. Hallelujah. Go ahead and get your seed, whether you're at home or in the room. Glory to God. We understand that the Lord loves cheerful givers. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. So we say breathe now on our giving, Lord. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Whether it's monetary, God, or whether it's just our hearts, God, our heart posture towards you, God. God, we say hallelujah. Glory to God. Now we're ready for our confession, and we know that we have several ways that we give tonight. Hallelujah. So go ahead and repeat after me as I tithe faithfully and so continually. Lord, we thank you that increase is flowing into my life from multiple directions. Every stream of income you have ordained is flowing into my life. Streams of compensation, streams of investments, streams of inheritance, and stream of harvest. Somebody say, therefore, I am blessed. Come on, say it with conviction. I am blessed. My family's blessed. And my church family is blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. Go ahead and give God praise. Hallelujah. And we declare in the atmosphere that we are the blessed of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Go ahead and lift your hands tonight. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus, God, that every piece of your word, God, did not hit the ground, Father. God, that, that we ask in the name of Jesus, God, that it was planted in our hearts tonight, Father. God, so, that we, so we can walk uprightly and worthy towards you, Father, in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you, God, for what you're doing in Freedom Rock, God. We thank you for what you're doing in our community. God, we thank you for what you're doing for the people that are at home tonight, God. God, we pray a special blessing on their lives, Father, in the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you now, God, that as we leave this place, but never your presence, God, God, we ask you that our week be a blessed week. And God, wherever our feet tread, God, you will give us the victory. And God, we say it is so, and so it is. And every word has been established. In Jesus' name we pray, and we thank you as always. Amen. Good night. And you are dismissed. We will see you on Sunday.